Well, hello, YouTube land. Welcome to the channel. I'm Rochelle Emerson. Yep, that's who I am. Rochelle Emerson. <laughs> well, I got a new sweater on. Uh, well, thrift store. Thrift store new. We have a store out here called the Great American Thrift Store. What a good name. What a great name. But, uh... Just like everyone else, uh, school's back in session. My boy has done shot up to five, five ten. He's outgrown everything. Put on his pair of britches that he thought he could wear out of all of his pants. He said he had one pair. He goes, puts them on, and he was Michael Jackson. I was like, oh, my goodness. So we had to go, and uh, it was hard finding his size. We went to the thrift store. We went to these other stores. Couldn't find him no pants at the thrift store. Got him a couple of good pairs of shorts at the thrift store. He finds this. And I was like, oh, yeah, that lo that'll look nice on you. He's like, no, I got I picked that out. thought you might want it. <laughs> I was like, okay. And it was 3 or $4, whatever. But we ended up going yesterday evening after school to um, another store, a brand new store, because uh, we couldn't find him any pants that would fit him. So I, I ended up buying him some, some brand new stuff uh, last night. But... Um, we're going to get into this video. <laughs> she says she ain't falling for Michelle Obama no more. Was it Michael? Oh, it's Michelle. Okay. All right. Well, I ain't falling for no banana in the tailpipe. Y'all remember that from 48 hours? <laughs> Probably not. But anyway, um, I hope everybody's doing good, doing good. School's back. Uh, weather's starting to change just a little bit. The uh, heat's coming down a bit here. I'm in Tennessee. Um, but yeah, things are looking up. Let's see if I can get this going here. Here we go. And let's do this. Let's do this. She says I'm not falling for Michelle Obama anymore. <laughs> Let's see what she has to say. And this is, uh, she's analyzing Michelle Obama's speech last night. Michelle Obama decided to speak at the DNC, and she had a lot to say about her upbringing, about the affirmative action of generational wealth, and about trans and LGBTQ identifying children. Oh Let's my watch goodness. clip number one. We will never benefit from the affirmative action of generational wealth. They seem to. <laughs> That's all they do is whine and cheat, right? That's all they do. We don't get to change the rules, so we always win. If we see a mountain in front of us, we don't expect there to be an escalator waiting to take us to the top. No. No, you just expect the American people to pay for everything. Because it's okay when it's somebody else's money and not, not your own. <laughs> yeah, you expect us to get you up that mountain. We will. Sorry, y'all. Do y'all hear how racist that is? Uh, That's yeah. Crazy. If yeah. that's the question, first of all, who is we? I'm going to insinuate since this whole crowd of, of all these different people are cheering, we means people of color, and that's just what she's throwing in. Clearly, she's insinuating black people, of course. Black people are at the top of the hierarchy when it comes to people of color and leftist ideology. And isn't that a shame? I mean, I thought the Democrat Party was supposed to be for, for everybody. Why is it all this race baiting and only focusing on one particular... Uh, group it it's disgusting so she said we don't get second and third chances when we lose our businesses or bankrupt ourselves we don't get to lie and cheat to make our way to the top when we're at the bottom of a mountain we don't expect an escalator to show up so what she's really meaning 
is that white people are uh, liars, they are cheaters, they expect everything to be handed to them. White people own this entire system and get to create whatever it is that they want. Uh, white people get handed second, third, and fourth chances. How that works, I don't know. Do you white people, let me know. You all have a hotline y'all call? You need a second or third chance? And uh, you go through a little questionnaire about your heritage and your skin color and all of a sudden oh my you're granted that second, third, or fourth chance. I have no idea what the hell this woman is talking about. But she's on the same victimhood arc that she's been on for the entirety of her life. And yeah. Especially I mean, no, we don't have a checklist. I don't know what the hell she's talking about either. I want to know where my white privilege is. Hell, I have to go to the thrift store. I should say I get to go to this thrift store. I'm thankful for whatever we get to go and purchase with what money we have to to buy clothes and, and to get him some new school clothes. And all you parents out there, y'all know what I mean. It's expensive. Especially you got growing boys that just shoot up over the summer and you're like, oh my God, they need a whole new wardrobe and it is not cheap. I don't know what she's talking about. I think we're all, we're all the, the, we all want the same things, right? We all want good, you know, our children to get a good education and not be indoctrinated. I don't, they've always done this. The, every election cycle, all of a sudden, the blacks are oppressed, the Jews are bad, <laughs> whites are evil. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's ridiculous her life in politics at the side of Barack Obama. That is a crazy thing to say. And how she switched out the way she worded this by saying white people lie, white people cheat and they steal and they this and that and they expect an, uh, an escalator to be set out right in front of them and they oh get second God. and third chances. I uh, guarantee She'd be getting a very different response, but because she's talking about the hardship of blackness and people of color, uh, and people can use that as a crutch so they don't have to take accountability uh, for their own actions, people are going to be cheering this on. And I do have to point out, you know, she's saying we don't have the luxury of the affirmative action of generational wealth, meaning that white people have had access to generational wealth uh, by virtue of their whiteness. People of color haven't, and we don't have that privilege where is my white privilege card damn blame this is ridiculous i don't know how anybody with any kind of common sense falls for the banana in the tailpipe not all of us are born with a silver spoon in our mouth no matter what color we are period there are many white people who in no way, shape, or form have benefited from generational wealth but have no generational wealth. That's true. In this very moment in our year 2024, trying to build generational wealth for their kids to come, their grandkids to come, and to build their own legacy here in this country. They do not benefit from this privileged affirmative action of generational wealth. There are also many black and brown people in this country who do have generational wealth, whose parents owned businesses, their grandparents started businesses, their grandparents were doctors, lawyers, all of these different things, and they've been able to pass down that wealth from generation to generation. And it's just like anything else. I mean, either you were lucky. <laughs> you got so lucky you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, no matter what color you are. But that doesn't mean that if we weren't born with a silver spoon in our mouth, that we don't have opportunities. We're only held back from 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 ourselves. What what is the the saying? Your 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 own worst enemy, as far as your ambition, your what's your motivation, and get yourself motivated to do whatever it is that you want to do to be successful in life. You find a job you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And that doesn't, it doesn't matter what color you are. And now they are sitting in comfort here in 2024. There are also <laughs> many black people who don't have access to that. Who are you to speak on behalf of an entire group of people and tell them what they do and do not have access to, what they do and do not have the privilege of? And the demeaning way in which she talks about people of color is astounding to me. And to do that and say that to just a huge crowd of, of applause 
is insane. It okay. is. And that it is really is. separate from the clear racial undertone in everything that, it, that she's saying. If you are a white person who has struggled in life, who did not have access to generational wealth, what did she just say to you? Yes, you did. You're white. And I got to imagine there's white people in the crowd at the DNC. There was thousands of people there that have struggled through their lives as well and have not been handed privilege on a silver platter by virtue of being born white. Yes, they, li <laughs> they listen to these speeches and they've been so uh, propagandized, so uh, in indoctrinated by this like woke speak, white guilt, self flagellating language that well it's been that way even during the obama and it, it's been every election since my first time to vote which i'm telling my age was reagan's second term the thing is is that the democrats as far as i can remember when i started paying attention to politics which was a little more in my later 20s early 30s you know because you're young and you're doing other things you're not worried about politics because politics can stress you out once you start getting older, you start paying more attention. And they, they've been race peddling. Uh, remember the Al Sharptons and the Jesse Jacksons? Oh, my God. It was insane. The racism they peddled was crazy. I remember all that. Jesse Jack, not Jesse, J Al Sharpton Walker. Remember, he was really heavy set. Oh, my God. He's lost so much weight. I thought maybe he had cancer and he lost weight, but he's so thin now. If y'all have seen him, I think he's on uh, PMS NBC or CNN, one of those. But uh, y'all remember, y'all old folks out there, y'all remember he used to walk around with the jumpsuits and Jesse Jackson would be beside him and they'd be walking with a crowd of people protesting God knows what, whatever they were protesting because it was always, they were oppressed. Everybody, all the blacks were oppressed and they just kept hammering it and hammering it and I just never understood it. I was like, well, what's going on here? And obviously I'm not black. But, just like she said, um, we all had opportunities. And those white people, what, have they got some kind of guilt trip? I've never been felt guilty. I just listen to the rhetoric. Or listen to what, what platform do they have? What, what are they offering? What are they going to do for the country? And I'll tell you what, uh, Biden and Harris hadn't done crap. And they want, we want four more years of it. It's all hope and change and, and freedom and all of this crap. It doesn't make no sense to me because we're just going to get more of the same if they get elected. They accept this and they think that this is an okay thing to say out loud. Of course to a they do. group of people who are now going to go on to decide the, the future of our country and who leads it. Michelle Obama is DeLulu with a capital D, <laughs> which explains why she was at the DNC saying this stuff. Now, beyond that, she talks about her own life, uh, her own family. And let's listen to that clip before we go on. <laughs> in her steady, quiet way, lived out that striving sense of hope every single day of her life. She believed that all children, all, all people have value, that anyone can succeed. If anyone, all people of value. That's telling me that her mother was telling her everybody's valued, not just brown, black, yellow. Given the opportunity, she and my father didn't aspire to be wealthy. In fact, they were suspicious of folks who took more than they needed. They understood that it wasn't enough for their kids to thrive if everyone else around us was drowning. So, oh my God. <laughs> Y'all know they live in a great big house. They have security. Well, he's a ex-president. He has security team for life. But he's got a wall around his house. They have a lot more than their surrounding people. A moment ago, earlier, when I was uh, researching stuff for the video and doing things... Um, an ad came up of Obama asking for money. I, I'm going to tell you honestly, the first thing that popped in my mind was like, wow, how much are you giving them? 
I mean, they're millions. They got millionaire. I don't know. I haven't looked into their background, so I can't really comment too much on how much are they giving to the black community? How much of their time are they going? Is he shooting hoops with the young boys in the neighborhood? What what are they doing? What what are they doing? I'm just just I'm just asking questions. That's all. I'm just asking questions. I'm not I'm not trying to judge. I'm just asking questions. My mother volunteered at the local school. She she hmm. In fact, they were suspicious of people who took more than they needed. Okay. <laughs> Quick Google search of Michelle Obama. What's her net worth? Seventy million dollars. Seventy m -m -m million dollars. M -m 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 they were suspicious of people who took more than they needed. And she talks about people who are celebrating in the face of those who are experiencing anguish. It's the privileged versus the underprivileged, the oppressors versus the oppressed. If I recall, and and, and th again, like I was saying a moment ago, they are worth millions, both of them. Now I'm not going to sit here. And say, well, and tell them what the, those what anybody needs to do with their money. That's their business. But you're going to get in public, and you're going to make comments like that. Then you've opened up that door for for me or her to 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 say, hey, let me get her name in there. There you go, Emma. I don't know how to say her, her last name, people. But anyway, to open up that door. To say, hey, what are you doing with your money? You're going to point the finger at rich white people or rich old men who own businesses? No, I, I, you know, I'm just dumping, I'm just dumping it all in there because obviously they have more than most. Obviously. What are they doing in their community, like I said a moment ago? Are they, they got enough money, and it wouldn't even put a dent in their pocket if they went and built a, a playground area with, with you know, the, everything. Maybe a tennis court, a basketball court, swings, stuff for the kids to play, go and have a good, and a good time in, in troubled neighborhoods. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying. That's just crazy. Oh, correctly, we went through a COVID pandemic in our year 2020, and everybody was shut down. Only essential workers, whatever that means, were able to go out into our civil society. And 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 you know what? You know what stayed open? Liquor stores, and and the clubs, and the strip joints got to stay open. Everybody else, no. What the hell? Just saying. Go research it. It's crazy. And uh, conduct themselves and get paid for their work. You had kids out of school. You had people struggling. If I remember correctly, the Obamas had parties uh, during that COVID pandemic when everybody was shut down. Uh, oh, the and hypocrisy. People in their little tented uh, area outside uh, of their large mansions and properties. And the elites got together and had a fun day in the sun uh, while everybody was on lockdown and staying in their home. And they didn't want people to go to church. These people are hypocrites. They didn't want people in America to go to church. But they could have parties. The liquor store could stay open. Because, God, they, you know what? They got together in a committee and they said, oh, my God. We're going we're gonna to get together with the whole world. Because the whole world shut down. So they had a committee. They're like, okay. We're going to make these people stay home. We're going to try this. Good Lord. We better keep the liquor stores open. <laughs> these people are going to go out of their mind. And we're going to have a, we're going, we're going to have a riot on our hands. We're going to have a rebellion. We're going to have a revolution. Keep them drunk. Keep, keep the booze flowing. <laughs> you can go down. Put your mask on. Go get you a bottle of booze, beer, whatever it is you're poison. Or the young men, or older men too. You could go to the strip joints. It's insane. But they wouldn't let you go. They wouldn't let you go to church. 
shut down restaurants. It's insane. If I remember correctly, Michelle Obama and Barack Obama have a big ass mansion on Martha's Vineyard and several other properties. <laughs> You're suspicious. Martha's Vineyard? I don't know what's whiter than white. And they're there? <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong. What the hell? <laughs> Martha's Vineyard, they've got an estate. Come on, people. There's of people who have more than they need seems to just be the, the sticking point, I guess, for a lot of these left-leaning politicians. They make their way into government. They make millions of dollars. In Michelle Obama's case, a net worth of $70 million. How much of that she acquired during his presidency and after, I do not know. Wow. How exactly she acquired that much money, I do not know. But she can, I guess, lay out how much is needed. I think she got a lot of money from speaking engagements. I know that she was going around the circuits and uh, she she was doing a lot of speaking, and I guess she got interviews. Maybe these TV networks paid her to come on. Yeah, I think that's how she got her money. I'm just speculating, but it's a good it's a good uh, speculation. She was on. She was doing. She's probably getting massive money to go speak. Who the hell would pay her? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Several thousand dollars to come spew a bunch of verbal vomit. You know, how much of that is necessary because apparently we're never supposed to have more than we need. But they go into government, they acquire all of this money, and then they talk about taxing the rich. And my parents, you know, were hardworking Americans and they never took more than they needed. Meanwhile, every single day you're taking more than you need according to your own ideology. And I sit on the other end of it saying, you know, that's capitalism, baby. You know, outside of doing things illegal and, you know, the insider trading that should not be allowed and people should be prosecuted for, I say fair is fair. You want to make money in this country? and make more than you'll ever need, that's okay. You take that money, you pass it down to your kids, you build a foundation, you do this and that, I do not care. But to stand on a side that says nobody should ever have more than they need and we're gonna move in a communist direction and it's all about equity and making sure that everybody is equal and not only do we have equal opportunity but equal outcome in this country, and make more than you'll ever need, that's okay. You take that money, you pass it down to your kids, you build a foundation, you do this and that, I do not care. But to stand on a side that says nobody should ever have more than they need and we're gonna move in a communist direction and it's all about equity and making sure that everybody is equal and not only do we have equal opportunity but equal outcome in this country and you're sitting on a cool $70 million talking about that <laughs> as if you don't have access to an abundance of money to make the changes that you're calling for. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Hypocrisy knows no bounds. I think it's, um, look, they've been dumbing down education. They've been prepping for this. They, they've been prepping for this for decades. Let's spew this, let's spew this socialism. I mean, all Obama's stump was pure socialism. I was shocked the man got elected. His first term. And God, he got elected a second term. I was like, oh, my Lord. I didn't know what was going on. But I think it's uh, it's the education system is in bed with the, with the left-wing Democrat Party. I don't think that's a conspiracy theory at all. They've been, they've been gearing for this. Where we would all be the same. That... <laughs> These children aren't learning nothing in school about history or about socialism or about capitalism. Now, well, yeah, they've been learning capitalism is evil, but communism, socialism, and these countries, of the, 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 the peasant people like us, how, it, how these types of uh, government affects the, the society. And they just think, oh, we're all going to get the same. I don't have to work hard. I don't have to do shit. Like Obama told Joe the plumber, how about the guy behind you who who needs a little help in hand? Joe the plumber's like, what? <laughs> he's busting his ass. I mean, I'm thinking, when well, he said that, that to him, it's like, what if the guy behind him is just a loser living in his mama's basement playing video games? Right? Playing video games. And... and and Joe the Plumber's supposed to give his money that he's busted his ass for 
running his business, raising his family. He's passed away now, by the way. That's a shame. I'm, uh, my condolences to his family. But when I saw that on uh, Obama's stump, I thought, surely this man's not going to get elected. Look what he's saying. But old folks like me, we saw it. But the young folks, they're like, oh, wow, that's awesome. We can all have the same. When that happens, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. And your 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 mansion on, on Martha's Vineyard and your COVID parties and all this different crazy stuff that you guys are engaging in. Give me a break. But this is what they do every single election cycle. And they- every, every time they do. I was saying it earlier. It's like a repeat, a rinse and repeat. Now, if the Democrat Party was so great to bring us some utopia society of peace and harmony and freedom, freedom for who? Freedom for uh, young men to go in women's bathrooms? Where's the peace and harmony and utopia that we've always been promised by either side? Yeah, the economy was better under under Trump. But here you had Biden and Harris been in office almost four years now, and things have just gotten worse. Gas prices, food, everything, energy. They're wanting to transform America. So with this stupid microphone, I apologize. Um, It's like dead blame. Where's the utopia? So then now they come out and they're peddling. We're going to we're going forward. Yeah, they're going to keep going forward of the same crap that they've been doing. It's hypocrisy on steroids. Is anybody buying this? Are you better off? Are you better off? Do you think and you're in a position right now from after Trump left to now with Biden and Harris being in office? I say no. I mean, for me personally, for a moment there, I was struggling and stressing about gas. How much gas I have to spend every day. I have to take my kid to school. I have to pick him up. I've got to go do errands. i got to ride all over the place. And the gas was killing me. When it got over to $3 a gallon, I was like, oh, my God. I had to cut back on some food. I had You have to find a way to budget. You have to, you know, make huge pots of potato soup. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When you got kids in the house, they eat like horses. They got the bottomless pit. It's like, what am I going to fix? He's got to have good food. Get a thing, a little thing, a hamburger and a bunch of potatoes. Make potato hamburger soup. He loves it, by the way. But these are these are things I had to deal with just just to buy, make sure I had enough gas. Now the gas has come down, and I think they did it for a reason, because it's election time. If you if most people aren't feeling the pain, they're probably going to most likely vote vote with the with the status quo. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. We got to pray, people. They talk as if like they're these, oh, I'm so humbled by my experience and the experience of my parents. And it's almost as though in their elitism, they're trying to come off as the common folk. When you know damn well you're not. So go ahead. I th- Obama was a common folk at first. He was. Look at pictures of him. His mother. Pictures of him hanging out, smoking dope with his buddies. There was a picture of him holding a joint. His father's from Kenya. His mother raised him. Actually, his grandparents raised him. He's half white. He ain't even all the way black. He did. He didn't come with a silver spoon in his mouth. It's like this guy. What did he do? Nothing. He was the most least vetted person, I think, in the presidential history. He just comes out of nowhere and gets to become a senator. Oh, you know what he was before that? He was a community agitator. He didn't do nothing. 
He didn't do crap. He did he wasn't in the military. He he what did, he didn't do nothing. He just spewed propaganda. Somebody put put that man under their wing and propped him up on a pedestal. And then there and the rest is history. But I think he did come from moderate means. He did I mean <laughs> I, I really, you know, from looking at the pictures and stuff and some other programmings back in the day, watching uh, what they could pull up on him, it wasn't like they were wealthy, by all means. Now, I don't know about Michael. Oh, Michelle, my bad. Go ahead and acknowledge that and maybe talk about your experience being on the other end of it as somebody who is now extremely rich and talk about what you're going to do because you point to other rich people and tell them what they're going to do but the finger is never pointing at you even though we all know how much money you have it is pretty- well guys money changes people you got a family couple maybe maybe you know there's some siblings and, and then the parents die and what do they do they fight over the money. They fight over the house. Yeah. People out there, trust me, you need a will. If you're an older folk, which I know young folks ain't watching this, <laughs> you need a will. You, you really do. And uh, make sure that um, you specify each kid and what they get. And that you're in sound mind. Because money changes people. Brother against brother. It's it's always been that way since the dawn of time. Money changes people. And I guess the more you get, the more greedy you get. Uh, are they releasing any of that money to the to a community? I was saying earlier about what what have they done for the community and the black folks and the, you know, the kids in their community. Well, they live in Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> What the hell? Why aren't they doing something to, for Chicago? Again, I can't tell somebody how to use their money. But for Pete's sake, Chicago is a dumpster fire. Now, quite honestly, maybe 70 million is not the accurate estimate. She probably has more that we have no idea about. But this sort of point fingers down at the rich folk who are creating all of America's problem while failing to acknowledge that you are very much one of those people. And not only that, you got the money from complaining about the rich people <laughs> and from building a. The irony is so rich campaign that's supposed to be for, for the common folk and for solving their issues and for nobody having more than they need. And now you for damn sure have way more than you need according to your own ideology, according to your own playbook. Now, if that wasn't enough, the uh, talk of white people having escalators to just, I guess, fling themselves to the top of any ladder of any hierarchy, she goes on uh, to discuss her parents and being suspicious of those who have more than they need. And then she talks about children uh, and children who want to love who they love and be who they want to be. This could be interesting. The hypocrisy of all of them. And they don't care. They know it's BS. They do this because, look, if you've got an audience of weak-minded people, they're going to fall for it. <laughs> Hook, line, and singer. They don't want hardwired people. No, get out of the way. We're, they're, they're peddling to, to the weak-minded, to the young, to the naive. Who do you think they're, the De- Democrats have been peddling this to? I am so glad there has been, it seems like to me, now it's not like I, I mean I have been on YouTube for a long time, but I haven't been really active in making videos uh, on a, like I did some uh, several months ago and then I took a break because man I was just like I had a lot going on I had to stop and now I'm, I'm kind of getting back into it I've got a couple videos up the last last two weeks but I posted videos like 13 14 years ago and then scrolling through and because I was an active watcher of other YouTube content creators for for years 
a variety of things, either from science stuff to religious stuff to politics. And it seems like lately, at least the past two years of what I, I only I can speak for only my experience. I've seen an explosion of black conservatives, content creators that are just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. And I'm sure you guys have too. They're, they're really, really awesome. And what's great is the point I'm trying to make is, is they're not drinking the Kool-Aid. It's amazing. And I'm like, rock on. That is awesome. It is, it is, it's a beautiful thing to see. Finally, finally, they're, they're speaking up like her. She's like, they're just race peddling. Look, I knew they were race peddling years ago in my early 30s. I was like, oh, my God, I'd be watching this. And I'm thinking, why isn't any of these people in the black community recognizing that? Now, I know there were some who were, but not like on the scale right now. On Well, because YouTube is such an awesome platform that anybody can just set like me. I'm just anybody, regular judgment, set up a microphone and start t- talking about your ideas, which is amazing. So you get this plethora of. Of different nationalities, different people with viewpoints. And a lot of them are just phenomenal. And they're waking up. They're like, no, we're not drinking this Kool-Aid. Look at this hypocrisy. It's it's awesome. We can only guess what that issue's about. Let's roll the clip. Demonizing our children for being who they are and loving who they love. Look, that doesn't make Oh, my God. I can already tell you. I think I know where this is going. Be who they are and love who they love. She's talking about some woke-ass bullshit. Now, that's that's okay. Now, I haven't seen this, so here we go. Demonizing our children for being who they are and loving who they love. Look, that doesn't make anybody's life better. Okay. They are and loving who they love. I love the vagueness, right? Because they could go out and like make these very vague statements that sound super. Yeah, but I, I I can read between the lines, but not everybody can. But I don't know. Let's see what she got to say. Very beautiful, but let's really <laughs> break down what that means. Being who they are is, of course, in reference to gender ideology, mm-hmm. and transgenderism, and gender dysphoria, uh, often experienced by kids in today's day and age at uh, exponentially uh, rising rates, which is just insane. So by being who they are, she means... And why is it in rising rates? How the hell? Unless somebody's telling them this, feeding them this crap. Feed, shoveling it in with a shovel at school. At the public schools. What little kid is going to be, they're thinking about playing, going with their little friends. Playing on the playground and then having a good lunch when they go to school. They don't, they're not thinking about, oh my God, I wish I was a different gender. Unless they put that shit in their heads. Freaking, uh, Disney doing that crap too? Been d- uh, slowly slipping that crap in for our children? Come on. <laughs> it drives me crazy, people kids either socially or medically transitioning the big hot button issue is of course the medical transition which the left supports and republicans do not support my hot button is right out the gate uh obviously that is insanity uh getting the surgery to young children or starting the uh hormone treatment but the propaganda at the schools opening up the door to to put the thoughts in their heads that they can have two mommies or two daddies or they could be something else or they can identify as a stupid animal or whatever they want to identify to. We know California is stupid. They're like, oh, we ain't got to tell, we ain't got to tell the parents jack. That's, that's my hot button because that's where it starts. That's where it starts. Who's indoctrinating your children, people? So what she means by be who they are is allowing little boys to uh, undergo 
puberty blockers, hormone replacement therapy, have their genitalia cut off of their bodies uh, in service of this new identity, become lifelong medical patients for the rest of their life with a multitude of complications because these are experimental procedures. That's what she means by be who they are. For girls, she means undergoing puberty blockers, hormone replacement therapy, double mastectomies, having a skin off your arm, flayed off during surgery, made into a phallic shape so that you can have male genitalia or something resembling male You know, I wonder if uh, Michael, I mean Michelle, would do this with her own children. Now, there has been some celebrities. But I don't know how much I'm buying that. Because you generally... Uh, they they shelter and protect their children. Their children don't go to public schools. They get the best education the money can buy, which is fine. If they got the money, then by all means. But are they going to let their children butcher themselves? Well, Cher did. Cher supported her daughter. Some of them do. Natalia, and having that attached uh, to your privates. That's what she means by allowing kids to be who they are. See, when we strip away this really nice language of kids know who they are and they know who they want to be, and we talk about what it really means, how it's really implemented, do you see how the the image changes? And I'm going to be really graphic here. For those of you who don't understand, I, I, I sort of explained how a girl undergoes uh, that sex reassignment surgery. Let's under, let's explain how a boy. I haven't heard her explanation, but... Um... I watched the documentary. Um, oh my God, what is that guy's name? I think Jordan Peterson had interviewed him too, and uh, that guy Andrew Gold interviewed him as well, which he had his genitals cut off, and now he's coming out and he's saying he's regretting it and all of that. But he was in his uh, this this gentleman, which is now doesn't have privates as a man <clears throat> he uh he was like in his late 20s or maybe he was 30 when he had the surgery and now he's coming out saying how painful it is and all the um the after effects of the surgery something about with his urethra he's constantly he gets infections uh and and the hole closes up, people. The hole they make after they they give a chaka dicka off me procedure. <laughs> they get this procedure, and they have to stretch the hole for the rest of their life. It's insanity. Gets that done. He's going to have his genitalia cut off. He's then going to have a hole opened up in his private area. And if you're thinking, Amla, that's not natural. I think they split. They split the penis and then they somehow they build. I guess I guess they build the, the, the inside of it. And then I guess it's the Aretha that comes out. Uh, it's like he was saying like his was like really short or something. Yeah, it was it was it was disgusting there you know there's no female anatomy in there how does one keep that open they're given a dilator that they will go home with and every single day have to put a dilator mm, oh in yeah. this hole that has been opened up in forever the body to keep it open now you can imagine a hole just randomly being placed in your body there's probably a lot of different medical complications that happen with that yeah some people have it close up many have uh, infections many the dilator is extremely extremely painful of course there's nothing natural uh, that's happening for a woman happening down there so you can imagine all the different medical complications that happen with that so when she says allow children to be who they want to be that's what michelle obama is talking about it's demonic they know what's wrong they don't care y'all know who they're working for they all sold their soul they all sold their soul y'all see that picture of Obama, uh, uh, Michelle, doing the, the devil sign while she was on stage? I should have pulled that up. Um, they've got 
They got Planned Parenthood outside. I heard on the radio this morning coming back home from dropping him off from school. I listened to, um, I think it's called Christian Family Radio, Dr. Dobson's uh, part of that. Christian Family Radio, I believe that's what it's called. There's a woman on there. She was saying, because I did a video uh, a couple nights ago, and I was wondering, yeah, how many, are they going to give us some stats on how many babies they kill? Apparently, she said there was about 28. It was 20-something, okay, when she said this morning. I'm trying to remember, like, tw- whatever. One's too many, okay? So, it was in the 20s so far. And I think today's the last day of the uh, the demon narcissistic criminals convention, okay? So, they're out there killing, killing children. Planned Parenthood. I think they're all in cahoots because they're they're worshiping some god named Moloch. They're doing something. It's inhumane and inhuman and against God to do such a horrendous thing to a child. To a child, these people are evil. They're just, that's just plain evil. It is just plain evil. Again, stripping away the language really changes what that means, and it changes how beautiful the sentiment actually is. Now she says, for being... Oh, and talking about changing the language, they have been, the liberals have been masters at it for decades. Masters. Pro-abortion. Pro-abortion sounds good instead of anti. (laughs) Well, they they dubbed us anti anti-abortionists and, and then we like hey uh uh-uh, we're pro-life but at least we doubled back down and gone uh-uh you're not you're not labeling us with some negative quotation to make it look like oh but they have done a masterful job at curtailing language on getting their agendas across and i'm telling you the conservative christian republicans we need to do a better job we need to step it up people we need to do a better job of getting the message across with a positive. And we need to think about language. This is spiritual warfare and the the mind of our children's minds full of mush. Who they are and for loving who they love. Um, how many of you knew your sexuality at like four years old? Any of you? No? Probably not. You probably maybe had a crush when you went to preschool and uh, you thought, oh, Sally's really cute or, you know, oh, that kid, Chris, he's really cute. I think I have a crush on them. Do kids really know what that means? Do they know what their nope. sexuality is? So why are we concerning ourselves with who children love? And- you don't even know, really know who you are. We change. Think about it. If you guys are in your 50s or 60s or 40s, for that matter, 30, whatever. From the time you were 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 to 25, 30, and so forth and so on, you you have evolved. You have changed. Either you become more conservative or you're still stuck on stupid. But you know what I mean. Either you, you have children, your life changes, you devote your life to them, to some, to another human being. You sacrifice things for your children. I don't. Who the hell has a kid and looks at him and goes, "Oh my God, I wish it was a girl." When you had a boy, I think I'm gonna have them have a sex change. Or let's wait and see what they are. Or let's do experiments, which they have. They've done experiments. Let Let's take this kid, a boy, dress him as a girl, and see how they are. It's ridiculous and disgusting, and they did that. Y'all can go Google it. Go research it. They had testing like that. Some, I think it was a psychiatrist. I think she did it with her own child. It's insane. But the point is, is that we change over time. You go through puberty, and, and it's like you, your body's going crazy, you, your hormones, you know. You think you're in love, and you're not, and then you realize by the time you're 25, man, I was a dumbass. <laughs> right? <laughs> All about that frontal lobe. That frontal lobe, the frontal cortex thing is not fully developed. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna either live in the moment or you act upon your emotions without with the stop mechanism going, wait a minute, this this is stupid. 
How is this going to affect my life five years down the road? Because young people don't think like that. They live in the moment. They live on passion. They live on feeling. It's ridiculous what they're doing. And they know this. These people know this. Promoting this idea that children just love who they love and they are who they are. And that's why we should have these conversations about sexuality and sexual acts in their schools, which is what's happening. So we that really fires me up. Them talking to children about this crap. Parents go to school board meetings and they're saying, I found pornography in my child's library book. And maybe they shouldn't be looking at images of two men in bed together and they shouldn't be reading a description of what sexual acts look like between heterosexual or homosexual couples. That raises a red flag for me. And then the Michelle Obamas of the world will look at you and say, we shouldn't be demonizing our children. We want them to be who they are and to love who they love. It's a lot different when we strip away the language and talk about how these issues are actually being faced in our society. Talk about oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly, and I'm glad she's pointing this out. She's done a really phenomenal job. Do y'all need to check out her channel? She does a really phenomenal job. Um, they're they're masterful at it. The, I'm telling you, they have a think tank. How dumbed down can we get this? How can we get something, something so horrendous and dim, demonic and dupe the American people? How can we do this? Think about it like that, people. This is so demonic. They probably sat around years ago and went, oh, my God. Guys, how are we going to how are we going to implement this? How are we going to implement letting uh transgenders go into a girl's bathroom or or get into sports and stuff they've been planning this stuff it's been a slow slow process until we woke up one day and went what the hell they they were ma master evil-minded geniuses if you think about and i hate to call them a genius but damn they did it they they've got People believing it that their little five year old little little genie and little John need to be Bert Bert and and Angelica, whatever, right? They switch them, switch them. How are we gonna get them? How are we gonna get them to buy into this? It was a big think tank. They slowly implemented this onto the American people. And it's not just here. It's happening all over the world. Now, we know some countries in the Middle East are not going to be having none of that. <coughs> we know they're not going to be having that. But they have been a masterful geniuses at getting this across with their big think tanks, their money... To implement this stuff, to squeeze it into the schools, they're in bed with Disney. They are in bed with the pharmaceuticals. And this BS, that that's what they've been running on, with uh, we're lowering the prescription because pharmaceuticals are too big, big pharma, blah, blah, blah. Who's doing these operations? Who are you getting to do these? It's very complicated surgery. I'm telling you, this has been planned upon plans upon plans to implement this. Europe, Great Britain, America, Canada, implementing hormone blockers. Big Pharma, Big Pharma, hormone blockers. It's money. It's just more money. Why do they need more money? Is it about power, or is it about money, or is it about both? To control us, to break down the fabric of Christianity, strip it away, layer by layer by layer by layer. Strip it away, strip it away. Government is God. Government has all the answers. Shut up and eat your bugs! 
about why we are actually <coughs> discussing these things. It has nothing to do with not wanting a child to be who they are. In fact, it has everything to do with preserving what a child actually is, which is an innocent being who should not be having these conversations, who should not be confused in this way, who should not be concerning themselves with the ideas of gender or sexuality. It is, in fact, the preservation of what children are and the preservation of the love that children are supposed to experience, which is an innocent, non-sexualized love. So, Amen, we sister. on this platform for who knows how long, and these are going to be like the real sticking points. It's going to be about racism. It's going to be about LGBTQ issues. It's going to be about things like abortion. But the, the, the alphabet soup, and guess what? They, they want to add the P to it. And we all know what that is. Oh, it's okay to be attracted to minors. I think it's a P level. I don't know. It might be. Whatever. It's like, it's okay. It's not wrong. They were born that way. That they want to they wanna do this satanic, sadistic, evil, disgusting thing with children. Yeah, the LBTQ alphabet soup, probably, y'all, with the plus sign. I think it, the, the plus, I think the plus is what that means. I think it is. It's disgusting. They've opened up, that, that, that Pandora's box is open. I don't know if we can get it back in there and shut that box up, lock it up, and throw it at the bottom of the ocean. I don't, I don't know. Implementation of these things when covered in all this beautiful language is actually segregation and separating people based Absolutely. on race, telling uh, poor you know, black people that they have it harder than poor white people, telling people of color in general that they don't live life on easy street while white people do, segregating people in their schools, segregating them in programs, allowing certain people to be at the top of the leaderboard when it comes to jobs and affirmative action and college scholarships and all of these different This is, they've been doing this for decades guys ever since I, I don't know I mean a lot, at least the last 30 years I've been paying attention every election cycle even when the Democrats get elected eh, we're gonna make things better we're gonna make them they sugarcoat everything and then they race bait it's gonna be better for the black has the black hat is it any different is your life enhanced Chicago Baltimore New York I'm talking to the minorities. Has your life been any better under the rule of the Democrat Party for decades? Your cities are a dumpster fire. But what did they peddle to you? Just like she said, they make it sound so great that you are oppressed. White people, poor white people and poor black people. Poor white people have it better than poor black people. <laughs> the insanity of that. It's, it's absurd. We all have the same opportunities. It's it's about ambition and goals set. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. Things and alienating others. So they'll say it's beautiful and they're doing things for race. Instead, they're implementing racism. They'll yeah. say I'm pro-choice. I want women to be able to take care of their bodies. I want them to be able to do all these wonderful things and, and set a path for their life. What it really means is we offer free abortions and free vasectomies outside of the. Yeah, everybody should be afraid of this. They've been peddling this. And why would the black young women buy into this? Stop it. Stop killing your children. The black population would probably be higher because we have generations of dead black children. DNC, which is a little too much in your face. I can totally understand wanting to be pro-choice, but is it something that we need to be shouting from the rooftops that we've just received an abortion outside of the DNC? See how pro-choice just sounds so good. It's, it's all a lie, a demonic deception. The devil takes something and twists it and perverts it. You better believe it, people. 
Probably not. And they'll talk about children loving who they are and accepting themselves and loving who they want to love and being who they are. What it really means is gender transitions and talk of sexuality with children who are too innocent to have those conversations. Oh, man. I don't know about y'all, but if that happened when, when my boy was younger, I'd have been livid. I'd have been down there. I was like, he's coming out of that school. I'll sacrifice more of my time, and I'll homeschool him. But I haven't had that problem, thank God. So don't be fooled by the language. And don't be fooled by the language. I know she's so charismatic, and so is Barack Obama. Uh, and I see a lot of people saying, you know, I'm I, I disagree with that. I I don't find them charismatic at all. I mean, I, he, what, Jim Jones was charismatic. He got, what, a thousand people to drink Kool-Aid and die? Well, Obama did get a bunch of people to drink the Kool-Aid and elect him. But I never found him charismatic. I'm like, this guy is a socialist, communist. He wants to transform America. He doesn't want to go backwards. He wants to go forwards to some utopia that they're promising that doesn't exist. Other than desolation. Destroy the family. Destroy children. Destroy the education. Take God out of the picture. That's what they want. How is he charismatic? Did y'all see him talking? I saw a couple of clips and it's like, how did this man ever become president? Guys, wake up. Are people delusional? It's the days of Barack Obama because he had so much character and he was truly presidential and he had so much tact and, you know, he... I never bought into that either because at the time I'm paying attention. I'm watching his stumping speeches. I'm watching the DNC convention. I watched all that stuff when, when he was first getting elected. When the, when the process was happening, and it was like, how is how are people saying this guy is an articulate speaker? I did not see it. I you know what I heard? Um, uh, da, 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 uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, look, I am not a trained speaker, but I'm thinking if he's a speaker, why? Where was his training? I don't know if y'all. Was just nobody just, was everybody's eyes glazed while he was talking? Because I was like, whoa. And, and at the time, I'm thinking in my head, the news reports and the newscasters are all saying, yeah, he's a well speaker. He's a good well speaker. He, you know, he speaks very well. And I'm like, are they listening to the same guy I am? It drove me nuts because I felt like, am I the only one on the planet who is seeing this? how to speak to a crowd and how to represent this country, but look behind the scenes at the things they're actually supporting yeah, and what they're actually pushing forward. Because I can guarantee you, behind the charisma and the lovely face and the character is actually very bad policy. Mm -hmm. and Michelle Obama made that abundantly clear in her DNC speech. And those are my thoughts on that. <laughs> I, even I, uh, after Michelle Obama's president, uh, Barack Obama's presidency, was like, oh, you know, Michelle Obama, she's cool. You know, she's she's she must have been super young because, guys, that was a that was a long time ago. And like, she's a very young woman. Stylish. She did that whole get out and play thing with the kids and was like talking about fitness and just was really like a classy first lady. But then you hear her ideas and you go, oh, wait a second. Mm -mm, same shit, different day. Emma has grown up, and that's wonderful. She was just a young teenager when uh, Obama first got elected. And I, I think that's, too, it was um, so propped up and propaganda to, for him being first black, and he wasn't even all the way black. And I didn't think he could talk. I'm just going to say that again. I, I was paying attention. I was mesmerized by how he was just duping. And that they, and I was listening to the things he was saying. I was like, oh, my God, he's a socialist. Everything he was saying. It was crazy. I could see right through it. I don't need that. <laughs> I don't need that. Uh, and 
and she, again, her DNC speech totally emphasized that, but she is sort of seen as this, like, untouchable force uh, on the left, and it's just seen as, like, such a classy woman who has all these great ideas, the most educated black woman in America is what people call her, and then you lift off the veil a little bit and listen to what she has to say, and just know that it is no good. Yep, it was no good. No good at all. It was terrible. Let me see here. Takes me a moment to do things. <laughs> well, she did a phenomenal. She did a phenomenal job on that. Um, I'm gonna give her a like on that. I'm already to subscribe to her page. Um, Y'all go give her a look. She's got some really great stuff. Um, that she talks about. She had went on her own. She was with, um, who's that group? Um, Peterson, Jordan Peterson and them were with. Peterson and, uh, Andrew Clay and, uh, Candace Owens was with them too, but she left. Gosh, I can't think of the the group. I, I do apologize, but she she was with them for a minute, and then she left them. I don't know why. I don't think there was ever a reason there might have been, but then she left them, and she's still doing very well. She's just probably just better off just being being by herself. And I I don't really care. I'll just say it. I don't care for Candace Owens, and even before the whole uh, the 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 Tater Tot Brothers crap, or her interviewing him. This. I, I started watching her prior before that, and and I did subscribe to Candace Owens' channel, and I, and then just one day I'm watching her, and something just came over me like, I don't like her. I, I think it's the way she was attacking uh, Stephen Crowder, and I thought it was just kind of, it it wasn't it was in bad taste. Um, was Stephen Crowder? That video of him uh, kind of berating his wife was uncomfortable. It was. I don't know. I just found it inappropriate for her to be like just just hammering on him. And then g going after him because he wanted more money for whatever. Uh, I guess because he was going to join the, the, the people they were with. Um, gosh, I can't think of what they're called. I'm just having a brain fart right now. But y'all yeah, probably know Peterson and all of those guys. All of them are with that one organization. They're under that umbrella. But I don't think they control their content, though. They they still get to, to do what they want with their content. But she, Candace Owens, was all like prior to, I mean, I, I'm like, I don't, she just rubbed me the wrong way. So I unsubscribed to her. And then lo and behold. <laughs> Here she come out saying some uh, uh, some things about the Catholics, and then she ends up leaving that group. <laughs> and then she she had done an interview prior to that with uh, with the the Tater Tot uh, Andrew Tate, and he's tell she bought everything he said hook line and sinker. And I'm like, I really don't like her. I mean, I didn't like her prior to that, and then just reinforced it. It's like. She said, I did my research. I read books. I did my research, and, and and Andrew didn't do nothing. It was like 10 years ago, and if I did, when I did something 10 years ago, is it really going to hold it to me now? Well, yeah, it depends on what it is. <laughs> Some things don't have uh, limitations on it. Some things do. But apparently the tate, the tater tots got arrested again yesterday and had to spend overnight in jail because they have more charges against them because they are sex traffickers for the lover boy method. And she blew it off. And I'm like, what is wrong with her? If she did her research and read the indictment, which she said, I did, I read the indictment. If y'all have looked at any shows with the indictment, the list, uh, the, the audio conversations... The screenshots of the text messages. They were literally lover boying these women. It was insane. But anyway, that's enough about Candace Owens. But anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Thank you for joining me. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, 
I got 308. They, subscribers, the, YouTube has made it to where if you get 500 subscribers, you can get monetized. So I'm trying, guys. Help me out, people. Just just like it and subscribe, and then don't worry about watching the videos if, if you find me distasteful and disgusting. And I wouldn't blame you if you did. But anyway, have a blessed day, and thank you.